Here are all of my Arnolds that I painted for my Arnold Schwarzenegger art, art gallery. You think it's funny? Um, I'm gonna introduce you, starting with this side over here. Sorry, I got some reflections. This is my feet. Can you see my feet? Oh gosh. That's my uh, Conqueror uh, charcoal, Arnold. Arms open, in front of the crowd. This, this is the oak. I wanted to do oil with a lot of texture, so there is, hopefully you guys can see that, all that texture up in hair. So when you get close, I want it to be just like, just a mash of colors and textures so you don't really know what you're looking at because I did all of this with a palette knife except for all this up in here. We did that with a toothpick. That's a toothpick. Um, and then I did smooth some of this out with a brush, but mostly it's palette, that's brush, so you can see there. And then he's on a matte black background to really make him stand out. And so I wanted a sheen for all of these oils. I wanted to do different textures and finishes. So this one is pretty uh, rough. <laughs> I wanted these to be a little bit more realistic, but for whatever reason, I just wanted to add like kind of a blue highlight here, backlit sort of. So all of his highlight points are actually like a, a light blue but I wanted to contrast that with like the copper kind of color of his skin because I like contrasting colors. So orange and blue are my jam. Um, but I wanted all of these to be, all of these series of my oil Arnolds, I wanted these to pop more with a matte background. So the background is flat acrylic and I wanted that to sort of absorb the light, but I did want to do his body in oil because um, you can see it has like a slight sheen to it the way that skin would, especially bodybuilding skin when we're coated in our oil. So I really wanted that to stay just kind of like a smooth, you know, there's some shading in here to kind of smooth out the colors and textures of the skin. And I actually did what I'm probably not supposed to. I pretty much rubbed that oil paint into each other. Um, but I wanted that to give a little bit of a sheen and reflectivity, just the way that oiled skin would against this flat background. Da, da, da. There's Arnold. Um, so he actually didn't smooth out his face as much as I would have liked, but whatever, who cares? So um, yeah, he has some blue highlight here too. Up in here, so it's blue. And then uh, he, got, he got a little more detailed. A lot of this had to do with the photos that I actually had to draw from. So this was not as detailed of a photo and if I had more time I would probably make him I would do something else there he needs something he needs some details but this dude right up in here got plenty of details so this is still oil with a brush um, so unlike the first oil painting I showed you all he doesn't have as much texture but that's okay because this is a different Arnold um, I wanted him to be real intense not really that intense um this is exactly how i talk to my paintings while i'm doing them by the way i'm weird so here's the oil set moving on um this is going to be so hard to get because i didn't ha i don't have the glass yet but i want uh, some non-reflective glass here's damn dude you can't even see any of that Pfft. well there's the refined arnold i have to get a separate video view I can't even see you in this glass. Probably can't even see this dude in glass either. Whatever. Oh, suck at this. So, is this pointless? There. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> here's, some, here's some up close texturing at a very odd angle to get that reflective glass out. Um, so, this I wanted to look pretty rough, pretty gestural. Oh, I'm not tall enough. Um, I actually took so all all the different types of charcoal that I had, which were pencil, um, sticks of vine, and even loose charcoal. And I only used black charcoal on this white paper. And what I did was I sprayed just a little bit of uh, acetone 
and turpen terpenoid. I just wanted to see if that did anything. Didn't do what I wanted it to, but it's still cool. Um, so if you look close, it's like a little, a little drippy, but it actually, oh, I'm so short. Um, it actually smoothed out his skin a little bit. And then I kind of hashed back over it with some rougher markings like that. That's probably my favorite. Um, and then I brushed over this. So these marks are actually with a like rubber tipped paintbrush. Um, so they kind of, I etched that charcoal back around the lines that I wanted to make prominent. Um, but what's interesting about this one is I actually did not do that to his face. I wanted his face, face what? His face to stay really recognizable. Um, so I kind of wanted this kind of movement feel to the piece, but I wanted his face to be very still. So I actually didn't do that to the rest of the piece. And I used my hands all over the background just to kind of rub that in. I use my hands a lot on this one, actually. Uh, are we going to try this again? This is a little better, I guess. So my refined Arnold is actually white charcoal with graphite. Um, if y'all have been watching my paint, my pet portraits, you know I draw a lot of hair. So that's probably the interesting piece to me is the different textures in his skin. Am I tall enough to get up there? Oh, the eyes are the windows to the Arnold. Um, his eyes are black charcoal and a white highlight. That's why they're so intense. Um, the rest of him is just graphite, which is kind of that grayish tone. Um, so I used the graphite into shading with some white chalk pastel and uh, white charcoal. I'm on my tippy toes, so I'm all shaky. Uh, yeah, so that's what that really that to me creates a lot of depth. I used a, a loose, looser pressure to like to make the skin, and then I used like a harder, firmer texture with all this detail. Cigar, I don't care about the cigar. So uh, that's that's those Arnolds. Then who who's next? These Pop Arnolds. Um, here's what's up about these. So I. I've always loved this kind of art, but I hadn't seen a whole lot of Pop Arnold's done this way. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. However, um, the pop art style hit a kind of a boom right about the same time, close to the same time frame that Arnold first made his, um, I don't want to say peak, but where he was also booming in the, um, like really the 50s to the 70s, I think is when this first started to be gain popularity. But um, a lot of pop art is done with layers of print work. And I don't have that yet. Maybe someday I'll try it. But right now um, I have acrylics. And so I painted the backgrounds and then I painted a layer of, um, I painted a layer of, whoops, what am I saying? A layer of white paint for the, the silhouette to actually make him pop. So there's a layer, a layer of white paint first to make his whole, um, body stand out from the background and then a layer on some crazy color. This is really hard for me because I had to force myself out of what I normally see as colors. Everything to me has always been realistic and so I'm making myself try. This one is my favorite. It's hard to pick up but it's it's like a hot pink and red and burgundy. Ugh, that one's my second favorite. These are so high up. Why did I do that? So yeah, each of these are a different layer of paint. So I just waited for one layer to dry. Then I would go, I'll use this one again. So I went over it with white first for the silhouette, then blue. Then I waited for that to dry. And then I just pulled in the kind of mid-tone shadows sort of here. Then I put in the real deep shadows. So there's only three to four, four, maybe five at the most shades of different paint to create highlights, mid-tones and shadows. Um, but yeah, this was a lot of fun because I had to pretty much force myself to choose colors. That was the hardest part for me. Um, also hard, also hard. Can we talk about how freaking small this is? Like, get up in there. Do you see how little, that's a little detail. I'm shaking. Um, yeah, that stuff is like, that's like art for mice. And then we got like the contrast, which is, you know, big, big, huge Arnold up here, which is 
way big. So that's how I try to challenge myself was like being able to do these fine little details and then do something like huge. Uh, okay, now this guy, he's actually, here's that reflection again. He's there to, I wanted this set of just simple, just super simple charcoal Arnold's focusing more on his silhouette. So there is some detail here, not as much. However, I used a black, a black charcoal. Can I get up there? I used a black charcoal with um, some sepia, like brown colors with um, different colored charcoals and pastels because I wanted to be slightly off-white to pop against the background, but he goes with these other two Arnolds that are actually already in Columbus right now. Um, and I'm gonna sell them as a set. So he's white, white background with kind of sepia tone. I've got another one that's a neutral brownish gray with black and white charcoal. And then I have another one up there that's a black paper with only white charcoal. So I wanted them all to fit similarly. So that's why I made him. Um, now, oh, this guy, this Arnold. This Arnold, I hated him at first. In fact, what you all don't know is there is a completely different Arnold under there because I was like, this looks like shit. I'm not going to finish this one. I'm just going to write it off. But then when I looked at it, I was like, that's a waste. That would, be, that would have been a waste of time to just toss it. So instead, he actually started out like a watercolor. And it just wasn't doing what I wanted it to. So I took this because my first idea was to do like a real soft, pretty watercolor for my people who just want something softer, a softer Arnold, um, to go in their homes. And this actually turned into the quite opposite, which is a barbaric Arnold. And I wanted it to be, um, kind of caveman-like. So that's what he is, like a Conan the, Conan the Arnold, uh, <laughs> barbarian Arnold. So this background is pretty, pretty etched, um, ra real rough. So what this Oh, what this is, this Arnold, is actually acrylic, um, acrylic with modeling paste, which I have never used until this very painting. So I actually carved some lines back in with the palette knife. Uh, and the colors, I just wanted to be more, I guess, neutral. Everything else I was doing was so bright. I just wanted something that maybe somebody else would like. But he's supposed to look barbaric. Conan the Barbarian, the Arnold. Um, now, this guy, it, it, this is funny to me because I, uh, I didn't even know what I was doing when I did this, and it was making me mad. I hate, I hate the combination of primary colors. I do not like red, yellow, and blue next to each other. If there's an orange in there, it's fine, but I don't know why those three colors alone just bother me, so I was like, at first, I thought I wanted him to look skin tone, so I started laying down some yellows and pinks because I was like, that's the colors that are in skin tone. But then as I was doing it, I was like, no, that's too boring. Um, so, so I started adding some blue, but then all of my other pieces started to have this kind of blue and orange tendency, so I was like, I'm just going to slap some red in there. And then it started to kind of look uh, a little bit evil <laughs> because as these paints started to run, it looked like just a bloody Arnold walking out of a war zone. Like you'd been <laughs> been fighting to the death. So I was like, I got to put some blues back in there uh, to make it look not so scary. Um, so anyway, this is gouache. And I, what did I do here? I, I started real light, like super light. So it almost looks like watercolor here. Then I went through with more pigment. So just the same colors, just a deeper pigment. And I traced that over a couple times. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna turn this whole thing upright. And so I let the paint sit for a second to seep into the canvas. And then I stood the painting up so this paint dripped vertically and it's even under there. Um, so yeah, he's he's my running man, Arnold. Uh, but yeah, I was, I don't know, I'm happy with this now. I like it now. I, I just didn't like it while I was doing it, I guess because of the colors and the paint did not act like I thought it was going to act. I didn't really know what to expect, but that's what we got. So that's cool. Um, up here, this was so hard. And I'm not even close enough to show you all why. <clears throat> so everything, <laughs> every piece on him 
is a linear aligned shape and what bothers me about this is humans are not symmetrical so neither is this painting and neither are the sides or the shapes or the shadows or any of it so it's weird because like while i'm doing these geometric shapes my brain was fighting the whole time and it's like but it's not supposed to be even it's not supposed to be completely balanced on both sides for one thing that would be boring but also that's not true um even arnold is not perfectly symmetrical and so the it was really throwing me off that i don't do lines i don't i don't draw with straight lines a whole lot i am not good at them i don't like coloring in the lines however i am glad that i did this one I wanted that challenge. I, if I had more time, I would have probably gone in and shaded it to look more cubistic, but I'm happy with that now. The funny thing is, even in his face, which you can't see from this angle, everything is just a line or a trapezoid or a rectangle or a triangle. So it's interesting to me how teeny tiny triangles, I'm gonna try one more time, but it just ain't happening. Teeny tiny triangles make up like the pieces of hair that stick out on the side and like, and the corners of his mouth and the gap in his teeth is just a rectangular line and we still recognize it as Arnold I guess because of his uh, that, that's cool to me it's like here's a few triangles and rearranged in a certain way it makes Arnold's face so moving on this Arnold I like this Arnold he seems primal like I don't know the color choices the hash marks I just used um, this was acrylic with modeling paste again, and I only used a wide, um, sorry, a medium palette knife. And I just kind of spread this paint around. So I let the paint mix, I let you all mingle, be friends, make a new color. So I actually laid down the black first, which normally I do the opposite. I normally lay down the white lighter tones first and then put in the darks. And I just had like a teeny hint, just the littlest hint of his eye shape and his mouth shape and kind of some hair. So if you get real close, get real close. Um, that's not a whole lot of detail, but you all recognize him, I guess, I, I suppose. And then, um, yeah, some muscles. And then I just laid down some blues, pop some red in there, cause I did like those colors together. That, that was more about me needing to do something with those colors. And now we come into probably the more conceptual pieces that I didn't know if I was gonna have time to do, but I'm so glad that I did. So I actually had this idea while I was painting another Arnold and I was like, how funny does he, in another picture, he, it looks like he was making a duck face. And I was like, dude, I could zoom in on his face and just make a duck face Arnold. And then as I got to thinking, I was like, I could just do this Instagram series. So I did, I started with this like, I wanted a recognizable canvas, a shape. So, Anyone who's familiar with Instagram, whether you are conscious of it or not, you are recognizing that square um, shape as association with Instagram. So all the pictures are square, the logo is square. We have this uh, very obvious um, Instagram background on all of these. So I did that with spray paint. So the spray painted um, colors in the background I wanted to really fade so I wanted that to look just like the logo and then I did the white outline with the rounded corners because that's what's familiar but um oh before I forget this piece because I did it on purpose see my signature down there that's my Instagram handle which nobody ever knows how to say it it's it's my name autumn it's automatic and I'm sure I just blew a bunch of minds right now automatic boom boom uh, so that's my signature. So those are all of the um, Instagram trends, the trendy pieces. Now, the part that's probably my favorite is every single one of these, starting with this guy, has a phone. A tiny, teeny, tiny cell phone for ants. And he's taking a selfie. <laughs> so I just imposed on his poses a little cell phone uh -huh. see him and i did this for a couple of reasons but here's what's funny this one's my favorite this phone is my favorite because this is a bigger canvas which was again these details are as not big they're not a lot of big so that's, that's harder for me sometimes um 
I'm so proud of this phone because if you look in close, his reflection is in the iPhone. You can tell it's an iPhone because I made it that way, just like into his face. So, okay, so I went, anyway, back to this. So this is acrylic, um, acrylic and paint pen. And I wanted these paintings to get your attention first, not just with the colors. Um, I did these colors on purpose because I wanted the colorful background, but I wanted the black and white to separate that so that it first gets your attention. And then as you come in closer, I want people to be like, oh man, that's some interesting detail. I would like to look closer in that. And then as they look closer, they're like, what the hell is that in his hand? And they're like, oh, it's a phone. So part of the reason why Arnold is in black and white still is because these Insta Arnold series to me represent the growth and the change in bodybuilding. And what's really cool to me is I started doing this 15 years ago in 2003 or four. And there are people who have been doing this way longer than I have, but there's kind of this old school system or group. Um, it's almost like a school of old school bodybuilding. And I feel like I kind of belong to that, or at least I uh, relate with it. And it's sometimes it's kind of frustrating or like interesting to see how our sport is changing because of social media. Um, the way it's represented, the way that people assume and what they think it's like. Not just, not negative necessarily, just different. And so this whole bodybuilding thing seems really glamorous. But for those who are in it or have been in it for a long time, know that it's still this gritty art that you have to you have to suffer some and I know the instant gratification of social media makes it seem like oh man I'm gonna work out and then here's all these sponsorship opportunities and here's all this money and I'm gonna be famous and I'm gonna it's not like that <laughs> and it's a little deceiving but what I liked was even now on social media if you see Arnold even all generations, the older generations, my generation, younger generations than me, everyone recognizes Arnold as an icon and as old school. And so I wanted this feel of modern life, social media, with a classic Arnold because he'll always be a classic. He paved the way of that classic bodybuilding and he'll always be recognized as that. And so... Um, that's what that's why I wanted to keep him in black and white because by doing so he remains timeless in an ever-changing uh, world of social media who knows what it's gonna be ten years from now but I guarantee when you see a picture of Arnold um, you'll recognize him as classic as old-school and as an icon and then even for the opposite for the people who grew up with this generation or, or relate with this Arnold the most Hopefully it's still a good piece of art. Like they would look at it and be like, oh, that's a nice pose. That's nice detail. You know, I, I like, I remember that Arnold, even though the world is changing. Um, so that's why I wanted to do that. It's kind of a, it's kind of a flip flop of ideas. So I felt that it was important to do these Insta Arnolds as, as weird as they are. I want them to be funny, but I wanted them to provoke some thought too. Um, just in the changes in our sport, I think that's, I think it's important to acknowledge because it's going somewhere and it'll never, it'll never be done. But yeah, here, here are all of, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. I'm going to introduce you to this Arnold, but you cannot have him. This is my Arnold for the rest of my life. Um, this is the, this is the ultimate Arnold. And I, <laughs> I actually made this piece to sell initially. Um, but I will never let it go now. I had, this was for last year's Art at the Arnold. It was the first year that they were doing Arnold fan art sale so you could sell art. And I wanted to participate in the competition, but I couldn't afford it. <laughs> so, so to cover my expenses for the trip, for my materials, for my time away from work, for the cost of my um, prints, I was like, man, if I could sell one painting, then I could afford to do the trip and not feel like I made a bad choice. So I actually made this to sell. But then as I started working on it, I 
put in so much of myself and it, I mean this in two weeks. Um, and so I started with acrylic, just an acrylic layer. And what I wanted was a different version of all these Arnold's. So this is more based around his acting career, obviously. Um, but they're recognizable, like for not just, not just bodybuilders, but I'd say general public too. So over here with Terminator, um, command, command, what am I, is that the right one? Oh my God, my mind's blown, drawn a blank, whatever. Uh, Conan, and then that's more from like Pumping Iron. So I started with this acrylic layer and then I was like, you know what? I think I want to experiment with oils because I never really used oils before. So I really got in there with all this different texture. Again, I used a toothpick here, a toothpick and brush. So this is my, I mean, in person, you can see that looks just like a cut, like you need a Band-Aid, Arnold. Um, yeah, and so I just really blended that in. That's his, um, that eyeball. I'm so proud of that eyeball. All that shading, all that toothpick. Toothpick should sponsor me. Um, yeah, so stitching this piece together alone was challenging. This, the other thing that was hard was, again, the quality of the pictures that I had for a reference photo were not matched. Um, this is, these are older movies. These are kind of newer movies. So the graphics for the pictures that I had access to to use were extremely different. And so this is a little less detailed um, as opposed to this one because that's, that's all I could see, man. So, and then the pumping iron guy... So I had to actually put a tank top on him because the shirt that I had, shirt, the shirt, the picture I had used, he's topless. So that's the ultimate Arnold. And down here is my signature because I painted that. And then I was like, you know what? I've put so much into this painting and it sounded absurd when I said it, but then I kept saying it. It's exactly what I'm saying right here, doing this video right now. The whole time that I'm painting these paintings, I'm thinking, I need to do such a damn good job because if Arnold saw this, I wouldn't want to be embarrassed with less than my best of my abilities. So I just kept working at it. I kept like layering on these details because I thought that I could. And I was like, well, Autumn, if you can, then fucking do it. Just even if, even if you're not sure, just try to keep doing it. So I just kept doing it. And I kept doing like one little thing at a time. And I took this painting to the art of the arm. And I was like, man, I really don't want to sell this. Because I kind of fell in love with it. And I had worked so hard. This was my first transition from where I just felt like I was doing okay art to like, wow, I didn't know I could do that. So that's cool. So I got really attached to it. And here I am. Painting away at the art of the Arnold. And guess who walks by? Arnold Schwarzenegger. So he walks by my art. And this friend of his was like, oh, that's a cool painting. We got to get Arnold to look at this. And I was like, yes, get Arnold to look at that right now, please. Also, thanks. And so I just happened to have a permanent marker on me. And I was like, hey, Arnold, in your Adidas shell toes, will you sign? Will you autograph my painting? And he did, and we became best friends. And I will never let go of this painting for the rest of my life, and it is mine forever. And this Arnold actually was the overseer of all of these other Arnolds to make sure that I did the best job that I knew how to do, and to make sure that they stayed in line when I wasn't in the room so they didn't all start having a pose down and flexing on each other and tearing it up in my art room my Arnold's on Arnold's on Arnold's. And I can't believe I did this. So, so there.